The iPhone X is probably currently the most well-known smartphone today. Does it live up to its reputation though? Let's have a look into it. Let's begin with the display. Looking at the display directly in person, it simply pulled a wow out of me. Despite the sides being not completely bezel-less, it still looks beautiful, especially that it's now an LED panel. Its massive size, accompanied by its smooth edges and sharp colors, also helps bringing the images displayed into life. The display itself is also pressure sensitive as usual. Nothing new here. But what is new is the absence of the home button, which takes quite some time to get used to. Especially since you now have to memorize some gestures to do those simple things on your display. Such as the swipe up to go home and swipe and hold to go to the multitasking. It can sometimes be frustrating to do at first. And still speaking of the display, you see while the top notch can and will be ignored over time, currently not all apps support the full screen display, making the display feel like an old phone again once you get that app that doesn't support full screen. You get this boxy look and black space on the top and the bottom, you know kinda like the old iPhones, and thus making the bezel-less display somewhat useless, I'd say. Okay, moving on. The iPhone now has the raise to wake feature which is pretty useful, I'd say, to compensate for the lack of home button so that the power button doesn't get worn too soon. Oh, and the lock screen shortcuts? They're now activated by a 3D touch instead of slides to the sides. Not sure if it's faster this way though, but you decide. The rear camera of the iPhone X is just great. There's no other words to describe it. Especially the portrait mode which really does maximize the use of the dual lens. I'll just let pictures do the talking for this. Oh and by the way, the rear cam, it also supports slow motion video of up to 240 frames per second at 1080p now. Which is currently the highest quality of slow motion videos I can find on the phones today. The stereo speaker on this iPhone is also loud, clear and sounds excellent. Making it the perfect phone for watching videos. That is if you can find the video that is compatible with its aspect ratio though. But even then, the compatible video when stretched, it will lose some detail which are cut due to being expanded out of the screen. So a little compromise has to be made here. That's something to be considered, since you will lose some of the details of the video. Moving on to what is probably the most debatable feature of the iPhone X, which is the Face ID. As far as I can tell, it's easy to set up. It also works 95% of the time and it even works in pitch black conditions since it uses IR sensors instead of cameras. It also cannot be fooled using pictures of your face since the picture would be lacking the 3D depth of a real face needed for the sensor to consider the pass. When you cover up some parts of your face, it won't unlock. When your eyes are closed, it won't unlock. Making the face ID considered secure enough that Apple Pay can now use this feature to confirm the payments. Face ID is a smart system that adapts to your changes over time, be it growing a beard, changing hairstyles, or even wearing glasses. So you won't need to re-register your face after a certain period. But in my opinion, while it's undoubtedly a useful feature, it would be nice to also have a fingerprint sensor somewhere on the phone, to save the hassle of having to lift your phone to the eye level every time you want to unlock it. And also, having to swipe up to unlock after Face ID detected your face? That's just impractical to me. Maybe Apple should have just given an option whether you'd like it to jump straight to the home screen or not. Lastly, it doesn't matter from which size you take a look at this phone, it's just looking clean and premium, the way a $1,000 phone should look like. Mind you, there's also no headphone jack. In conclusion though, this phone is definitely a great phone, but with $1,000 price tag, mm, it's a mixed bag actually. Well I would say, 
If you're the type of person who changes phones or upgrades phone every 3, 4, 5 years, then yeah, it's worth it. The spec will not get outdated for quite a little while. But otherwise, there are other factors, many of them actually. So I'll let you decide whether it's worth the price tag or not. This is Carrot Everything, see you on the next one.